Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Working on getting a fire built in this Ashley wood burning heater that's hooked to my smokehouse. Uh, of course, we had storms last night, everything soaking wet, like three and a half to four inches of rain, y'all. Um, but that's all right. We're getting the fire built. What it did is it cooled off. It's dropped down today till it's like 40, 50 degrees for the high. It'll be down in the 20s every night. So that's good enough for me to get this meat. I need to hang it up and smoke it before the flies start flying around everywhere. Um, so I'm shutting this, opening this up where I've got smoke coming in or air drafting in the bottom of this thing. Um, once I get a good fire going in there, then I'll go in the smokehouse, pull my meat up. I've put some hooks up in the top of the building in those runners and then i got strings with a loop on each end where i can just cinch it around my i got two front shoulders actually i've got three had four uh, but when i put the second two in see in mississippi it gets bad warm the early part of the year so the first deer that i killed i didn't film killing it it was early in the season uh, and i put it in here well when i and i packed it down with salt well the salt settled just a little bit left a crack well flies got in there i guess and got to one of the one of the front shoulders i throwed it out i'm not going to describe it but it wasn't nice um i discarded it had to rake a bunch of the salt out throw it away so i packed the other two down in fresh new clean salt and i left the other one in there kind of separated because it wasn't in too bad a shape so i hadn't looked at it I don't know what kind of shape it's in. I don't know maybe that it was warm and it may be ruined too. I'll inspect it good when I come out. But I've got two that I know is pretty good because I packed them in there when it was real cold. It just gets warm here. It gets up. I mean, this week it's been up 75, almost 80 degrees till yesterday. So it's hard to smoke meat in this climate. Humidity is terrible. So it don't dry out as well. A lot of, lot of problems, but I'm still trying to do it. So when you watch this video, know that I'm not an expert at smoking and preserving meat. I'm not teaching you, hey, this works. This is how you should do it. I'm allowing you guys to just watch me learn how. Uh, nobody I know, and I've said this in any of my other smokehouse videos, Nobody I know around in this area knows how to do it. Yes, I have watched videos of people that's up in Tennessee, people up in, in the Carolinas, Virginias, all out everywhere, that it stays cold and everything works different. It just gets so warm down here that it, it's it, the process is a little bit different. So, Last year, the two that I did, the meat preserved, stayed preserved, wherever it grew some mold on the outside, but that once you cut the mold off, the inside was fine. I ate some of it never made me sick no nothing so i'm comfortable with the preserving process problem i had was it was a little bit too salty uh probably for me leaving it in the salt too long so these two have been in there about three four weeks i think i read somewhere 10 days i looked at them at 10 days and they didn't look like all the moisture was drawn out like i wanted it so more or less what i am doing is preserving them for jerky tight dried meat pack it in a bag take it to the woods yes i rehydrated some and cooked it it was still very salty i do think this year i'm going to take one soak it in water then pour the water off soak it in clean water again and do about three changes of water soaking it rehydrating that meat back and see if it gets a lot of the salt taste out of it so that'll be another experiment but we find this up and we're gonna uh, we're getting some smoke rolling. Uh, I need to get a good fire going before I pull the meat out and hang it up because I don't want to cook it. I just want to smoke it. So when we get some good smoke rolling and you can turn. You can see back here there's some smoke coming out the sides of it. Uh, I'll bring you back here and look in here right quick. I did not have this done like this last year. I screwed me some hooks right in here. And uh, that way I got my string in a little better predicament. Oh, Cause see what I do is I've got a string with a loop tied in each end. This is number 36 tarred bank line. The rest of that is not tarred. Probably not the perfect string. Probably need like a cotton string. 
This is still bit. <coughs> it's getting smoky in here. That's still in there from last year. And it's still good meat. But these deer front shoulders, y'all, there's not a lot of meat on them. And one of the reasons I'm experimenting with them is if something goes wrong, I don't lose a whole lot. Uh, if I had killed an extra deer or two, had plenty of deer meat, what I killed this year, most all the meat went in the freezer. I didn't want to spare any of it, so... I knew somebody was gonna wonder if I was gonna get all that crap off of there. I, I ain't big on fighting fires, I do. It's just too easy to wreck it off. <laughs> but now fires are exciting. I tell y'all the story. When we was living in a trailer up here, we was young married and didn't didn't have a lot of sense either. Oh shut that one up. Oh, but anyway, we was out here, the, it happened twice. The first time I had one of them model rockets, you know, you had the cord hooked to it and it's got the little thing, little tripod with a rod going up and you hook the rocket on there and mash a button and that thing shoots off them. I had built this rocket and I didn't do a good job. It come up and went sailing out and hit the grass and whoosh, man, we fought fire for, I don't know, Next time we was out there playing with Roman candles and we was shooting them at the ground and at the dogs and everything else, you know, and caught the fire. <laughs> My wife was pregnant with Lizzie and uh, we were, <laughs> well, I was on the porch out there and I went and broke a pine limb off these pine trees. Now, but then these trees is a whole lot shorter and you could just run up there and grab a limb off and break it. I mean, they wasn't 20 foot tall at the time. I was out there whooping, I said, go get you a pine limb. <laughs> she went over there and she come back with a pine limb about this long. I said, oh Lord, what in the world are you gonna do? <laughs> My daddy come driving up the driveway, looked out there and I said, I mean, we burning like half the front yard off now. It's, it's days like an acre that's, that's done black. I'm out there and I'm getting ahead of it. I'm, I know I'm gonna get it whooped. My daddy, he lo looked out the window of his truck. He said, ah, he said, you just well to let it burn and <laughs> drove on off. <laughs> we did get it put out though, and it probably wouldn't have hurt nothing if it burned everything up because it the grass, you know, was dead. It was winter time. <laughs> but I ain't partial to fighting fire. Y'all here, I got, I got one rooster over here that he'd make a good preacher. He, he likes to hear himself as much as I do. He just crows nonstop. He's the only one. So as soon as we don't need him no more, he's going to wind up in a soup pot. But he's the only one of them mule trains that I got left. Probably need to bring y'all up. I'm going to let y'all see what I got going on right here. Now, I may get to hacking his coffin in him. Just bear with me for this. I know I already know my eyes is burning cold. But I wanted to get the smoke rolling before I went to digging this meat out because the last thing I wanted was the flies to get to it. <laughs> it probably needs wrenching off right now to get some of that salt off of it y'all can see how I buried that in there. So I am, <coughs> I am going to take this and rinse it off. I'm curious of what this other one looks like. It's a different salt. Mm, good God. I'm going to have to get something to bust that salt up. Hard as a brick bat. There, I'm down to it. Ah, I got it. This one, I think, is okay. The other one had visibly rotted some. 
this one was still packed in, but it was because there was a gap got got in there. All right, I gotta get out of here. <coughs> We got in there and died of smoke inhalation. Oh, I'm about to cry. Right. What I'm going to do is go get me a bucket or something, put them in, and I'm going to take them in there and rinse them off good, get the salt off the outside, and then we're going to hang them up. All right, I got them washed off good. I did not soak them in water down. I just... Now, I have a rack over here. I've showed it before. There's got some wire on it where I can lay stuff out. I was planning on doing sausage and whatnot. So I had built it in. So I'm gonna lay these on there till I can, and hold my breath, I reckon, till I can tie this up with them strings. So hang on. Ooh. This is the one that was already in there. Oh. Now y'all, it had been in there for, it's been in there for a few months. And see, I'm just cinching, but I know which one it is. So if it's like really, really more salty than the other ones, I don't know which one it is. But see, all I gotta do now is hang up. Oh. <sighs> I was smart enough to hold my breath. And I am aware y'all, there's probably better ways of doing some of this. Oh, I need to. I need to cut me a place around for that to go down in there just so I don't let it slide off I don't want to come out here and it laying on the floor it'd be critters or something got in there to it if I do that mm. Smoke ain't no joke. If anybody's wondering, that's what the inside of that looks like. I don't know how well that camera, that's just salted. That is not smoke. It's probably edible right there. I mean, if it ain't ruined by now, but. Let's just say I ain't gonna take my changes till I know a little more. <laughs> oh. Shut my salt box. <laughs> Smell salty. Roscoe is right. Won't you, buddy? Well, it's got my nose running. I need to wrench my knife off. Still liking that little old knife. I have learned when I'm wearing these loose fitting breeches with the loose pockets, I tote this knife. I hunted my other case, the one y'all have seen me here recently, the one I got for Christmas from my dad all over everywhere I found it out here in the yard i had crawled up under the truck to check where my axles come out of the front differential leak oil out now when i put it in four-wheel drive the other day i could hear it you know so i got in and checked and there wasn't much oil left in there so i had to put some oil but anyway while i was crawling around under there my knife fell out of my pocket i didn't know it 
When I got in there that night, went to put my stuff in my little bowl that I put it in. Where's my knife? And I got a light and walked around for an hour before I ever figured out where's that. Because I knew where all I had been fortunate that day. I knew if I don't find it now, I probably won't ever find it again. I did find my knife. But these loose britches, you lose stuff out of them when you're wallering around on the ground. Y'all know about wallering around. Well, anyway, this is a trial and error type deal. It was successful last year, so what I am doing is working as far as preserving the meat. Oh, uh, to come out with the best product, no, I have not figured that out. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say, this is the way everybody needs to do this. This is the right way. Not what I'm saying at all. Uh, this will keep the meat from running. Uh, push comes to shove, and I'm trying to learn because if we get into a scenario to where, hey, we can't go to the grocery store and buy stuff, and, and I need to say, you ain't got no electricity, no power for some reason, I mean... I'm gonna have power as long as I can have it, uh, cause we run a business with it. But if it gets to where you can't have power, can't preserve, or your freezer's full, you can't fit nothing else in there, and you you happen to kill something, this will work. Now, for us down here in the hot weather, not as good an idea because, like I said, that one, well, one of them looked all right, but the salt settled and separated, left a crack and y'all the flies got in there it was nasty um so i throwed it i didn't even no question it could have probably been salvaged if somebody was starving to death and <laughs> i did not want food with it nope 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 not no way no how so anyway you have to be careful and watch that with your temperature your humidity the flies and such as that so that's why i chose today it's cool enough that there's not flies flying around and everything that i could handle this meat and get it out and do what and while it's hanging right there i want to keep enough smoke they probably ain't no flies gonna get in fool with it but you know if they do decide to get in there and brave it i don't want to have to be worried about it so they're not out here swarming around today and that's why i'm doing this uh but y'all we in a society to where anything could happen uh a lot of it is not really political, I don't think. Some of it is. Uh, but what we're seeing is after COVID, a whole bunch of people has figured out that, hey, I don't have to work. I can make as much money as what I was making on my minimum wage job. So a lot of the products that you were buying, like crackers and, uh, you know, some tater chips and some canned foods. I mean, like last year it was jar lids and, and all this kind of stuff that you're just used to buying that come from this little menial job. Well, you can't get them all because nobody will show up to work to make that product because it only paid $7 an hour or whatever minimum wage is, seven fifteen, seven fifty. I don't even know. Uh, I hadn't worked a job like that. I just got paid, you know, but what we done, I hadn't worked a, a job like that in years. But, uh, it's a lot to do with that they just realize you know it's not worth it to go to work i can make you know live off the government or whatever else and then there's a lot of people have figured out you know what i can make better for myself and here's the next thing y'all everybody can't work an office job somebody has to do all these other little jobs so i mean we all can't be computer programmers and and, and the world continue on everybody it, it'd be nice if everybody could just have an easy job everybody can't make pottery i mean you know i wish we all could but that's why you start you, you struggling with stuff and and i encourage everybody grow your own food learn to forage learn to preserve some meat preserve stuff uh and I have considered fish, but when I'm really fishing and thinking about preserving, it's too easy to fillet them and throw them in the freezer than to try to figure out how to smoke something. So you might could smoke it to cook it, but I don't know. If it stays cold long enough and we catch something that's smokable, I may experiment with that, but I don't know. But thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. I've stood here and rambled on long enough. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all.